The Lord of the Flies introduction is to discuss the, uh, the couple PowerPoints that are up on Moodle um, just to kind of get you in the, in the frame of mind as to what's going on um, you know, in this World War II. Um, you may or may not have, well, I'm sure you've talked about it in your history courses, but you may not have spent a ton of time on it. When I was in school, my history classes, they would spend a ton of time in the Revolutionary War, and then blah, 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 quickly spend a bunch of time in the Civil War, and we barely get to World War I and II. We never got to Vietnam because we ran out of time. So the whole standards and core curriculum stuff, that's pretty good because that forces the teachers to not stick in the era of history that they like and they get through everything. So it wasn't until college that I finally got to Vietnam, you know, the 60s and 70s, and I didn't know much about it other than what you see, you know, Forrest Gump and, you know, Platoon and movies like that, um, Full Metal Jacket, um, things of that nature. Um, but a little bit of background on William Golding. This is by far his most famous piece of literature. Um, you know, this is a book that I did. Um, they taught it when I was a senior. I found my, my high school senior notebook and I had Lord of the Flies notes in it. That's weird because for years we taught this at the sophomore level here. Um, and then it's been shuffled out of the curriculum for, um, you know, for other, other stuff. Um, but Golding did serve in the military. It, it's important. In the British military. Um, and in World War II, Britain was crushed by Germany and the Nazis, which they crushed a lot of people. Um, they were like a plague. If you can envision what a map of Europe looks like, you know, it's just slowly, you can imagine just turning black or red for the Nazis and just kind of spreading, spreading. And it eventually went to London and, and bombed them. So this story is about a, a, a preparatory school, a school that prepares young men for, for university, for college. Um, and they were evacuated on a plane out of, um, you know, London or where their, wherever their school was. Um, before it was, uh, you know, they, they crashed on, a, on an island uh, without any supervision at all. And that's where the story really takes place. Um, just some basic pictures. Let's see if I can get this picture bigger here. Uh, you know, what uh, an aerial fight looks like. You've all seen movies, um, maybe even seen some real uh, video footage of, you know, bombings and such. If you've seen Pearl Harbor, things of that nature. Um, you know, a lot of death. Uh, World War One was called the Great War, which was in the 1915, 16 to 1919, 20 around in that area, um, and that was really devastating for most of Europe. Uh, we're focusing on World War Two, but just to show you that England really never recovered from the Great War, and so they've had war, the, the, the aftermath of war, and then the oncoming of the next war. They dealt with that for several decades, um, and they never truly recovered from it. Um, you know, bombed out streets um, and such. Um, <clears throat> when he got out of the military, he uh, got uh, Golding. Um, he decided to write this fictional story. Okay, it's fiction. Um, but he wanted to attempt to trace the defects of society back to the defects of human nature. He wanted to go out and prove and see what would civilized, cultured, educated children, what would they be like if you throw them into an environment where there is no order, where there is no structure, there is no accountability, there are no parents? What would happen? Would they keep their dignity? And we're British, we're very proper. Would they keep that the whole time? Or would they, you know, diminish into more of a primal, um, you know, uh, individual or, or animal? So that's truly what he wants to see. Um, and then, you know, we have pictures, you know, Nazi Germany and such, concentration camps. Okay. Golding's personal philosophy about the nature of humans and evil changed during the war. Okay. It came, he came to believe that man was sick, not exceptional man, but average man, that the average human being was sick. So being in war and you hear about the, the things people see and the things people are meant to do or the acts that they are meant to carry out and such, um, uh, they, uh, you know, that was changed. He was impacted as a result of it. Um, so the Coral Island, uh, Lord of the Flies was partly written as a response to a popular boys book in which three shipwrecked boys lived together happily on an island until rescued. And based on what Golding experienced in the war, and based on what he felt about human beings, 
he didn't think that those individuals would be skipping around having a happy-go-lucky time on an island. Um, and he goes, I don't, huh, that seems too happy for me, so let's make this a, a lot darker with a lot of symbolism and themes and such. Um, he believed that human nature would not result in such a harmonious existence, so he doesn't think that it would continue to be such a, a happy experience. And so you can see this uh, ominous kind of picture of while it remains tropical, you know, the clouds and the darkness and, and such. So kind of have a, you know, that, that mountainous, tropical mindset, um, you know, picture in your mind as we go through this, this particular piece. Um, good. Yeah, so just some more information about him as a, he, as a writer. He was very popular, this book more so than, than any other one. Um, however, he did win the Nobel Prize for Literature, which is exceptional. Very, very huge. Um, some symbols. Uh, we'll talk about symbolism in a little bit, but some symbols that as they bring things out or um, you know, as we develop the story, these particular things will mean something more than just, oh, that's a shell. What do you think that shell symbolizes? Okay, and what, I think it'll be pretty obvious, but we are trying to make connection with, with symbols and what the, those symbols mean. Um, when we see the Lord of the Flies, what does that actually mean? What does that symbolize? Huts and fire. Piggy, who's a, an overweight child on the island, who they call Piggy, which is very affectionate. Um, uh, the darkness, face painting, um, all of these things function as symbols, and there are more, and we'll, we'll talk about those. Um, you know, symbols are pictures, pictograms, um, at its most basic, basic level, um, where you look at a picture or you look at an object and it means something, okay? It stands for something. So we have this, uh, you know, this this thing for poison or skull and crossbones. Stay away from it, okay? Um, you know, going to the restrooms, you have the male and female thing. You don't have to put words. You don't need descriptions. You put that up and you know exactly what it means, okay? Yes, this has written out stop. But if you didn't have that word stop in there, you'd probably know what it means. Oops. Okay. Um, you know the peace sign. Just somebody waving or this, <laughs> right? Or, you know, with your loved ones, something like that. You know, rock concert. Right? Things of that nature. Um, you know, they all symbolize something. They all reflect something. Um, and we'll see this. Uh, this is what a shell looks like. Okay, a conch shell. Um, I'm sure you've seen it before. Maybe in a you know the a Hawaiian luau, or they take it. And they can make it sound like a, a trumpet. And they can blow on it, um, and uh, you know can communicate that way. Okay. Okay. Symbolism, allegories. Um, you know, symbols are kind of like an onion. You know, you heard remember in Shrek when Donkey is talking about you know an onion. Look. Ogres are like onions, oh, they're smelly. No, 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 you peel the layer, and there's, they're soft and gentle on the inside. Oh, they make you cry? No, no, and then they go on and on and on. Um, and so we all, we will see tons and tons of symbols. So um, the last little thing I want to talk about before we get going um, is dealing with the theme, okay? You will understand the basics of theme in order to recognize thematic elements. Um, we will see, you know, talk about mood and atmosphere throughout here, uh, throughout the story. Um, but in dealing with theme, and some of these don't show up very well, but talking about good versus evil, peace, life, death, fate, destiny, you know, love, hate, jealousy. Um, you know, these uh, these students, uh, these young kids, keep in mind that these are kindergarten age at minimum, all the way up to maybe, maybe sixth grade, 11, 12 years old. Okay, so keep that in your mind um, so that, uh, you know, follow what these characters truly uh, truly are like, okay? So how do you find theme as we go through, okay? There is a message that the author wants you to understand, and I already kind of helped you out with that, uh, with Golding's background, what he felt about human nature, and what he really thinks about, um, you know, the, the condition of man. Um, there are clues hidden throughout the work of literature to help you figure out what it is, and the author does not do anything by accident. Everything is intentional. The word choice, the pitch, the, the writing, you know, he picked that particular sentence or that particular paragraph because it was important. He wants to have it help prove a point. 
And this might not seem like it's making sense right now, but it will when we start getting into the darkness and the, you know, the, the Lord of the Flies shows up and the beast on the island and all of these things. And these little children uh, have to deal with these, um, these horrendous things. And uh, what, do, what do they mean? What do they represent? And I think that we'll be able to have a good, uh, good discussion there. Uh, remember, with all stories, with all stories, we have um, exposition where we're introduced to, to characters in the story. We have an introduction here to the main characters of Ralph, of Piggy, of Jack, and, and these individuals, you know, as we are introduced to them, you know, keep a tab on what these people are like. Keep a tab on the things that they say and do. How do they behave? Do other kids look up to them? Try to figure out who the main characters are. Well, you just said Robin. Well, those are just three or four names I gave you. Okay, but these are all children. Um, and so it, it, it gives a great description of um, you know, the, the island as to where they are and, and what they're doing. Um, you know, if you were in a big wreck, even a car wreck, what happens after, it ha after the car wreck? Well, you have to do certain things, okay? What do these kids do after they crash land on this deserted island?